been having some thoughts about this Civil War issue, some concepts, some things I've learned over the years from studying books about war and books um, from soldiers that were in combat, different uh, wars down through the years. Mostly the Vietnam War is what I've read a lot of, different soldiers. I was in high school, we were required to read, I think it was uh, Rumors of War by Philip J. Caputo or something, I think was the name of the book. But uh, it was quite shocking and um, kind of sparked an interest in me to study the issue of war and combat. And of course, I've studied the Civil War as well and, um, and what really led up to it and whatever else, you know, the issue of states' rights and things. But uh, the thing that impressed me about the Civil War was the level of hatred that was there between the North and the South. And that hatred was so strong that it still exists even today. You still get people from down South that have a grudge against you if you're from the North. And um, I don't really know of a whole lot of that up North here, although there's probably some prejudice towards people from the South if you have a Southern accent or something. But I mean, that, that hatred that was there, it uh, was very deep and uh, very powerful. And that's why you had brother fighting brother back in the Civil War. You had some family that uh, the boys grew up, one moved up north and the other stayed down south or vice versa, you know, moved down south and one stayed up north. And uh, they were on the other side, gray over there, so the uh, Confederate gray and the Union blue over this way. And this is the no man's land in between and they're shooting at each other. And now my brother's over on that side. Well, he shouldn't be on that side. He shouldn't be over there. You know what? If my, uh, my round ball goes over there and hits my brother, well, that's his problem. And you know what? That hatred exists today. I see that, that there are a lot of people that um, they're very much divided over the political issues. And quite frankly, when the Civil War gets started here in America, uh, it's going to be that same level of hatred. Uh, so that's... Uh, point number one that I'd like to make about that and um, again you know as a Christian as a preacher you know is there some way we can turn this back uh, well historically no when a country is so divided uh, even the Lord talked about a, a house that's divided against itself will not stand it will fall and that's where America's at right now America is a house a nation that is divided. So if I were to say no, that's not true, then I'd be rejecting the words of Jesus Christ. And that's the spiritual, even the um, physical, the, the temporal, if you want to say it that way. Um, every nation will go through this time of purification. Uh, historically, that's the way it's always been. People get so divided and they start to say, well, we don't agree with these people. Well, we don't agree with you. And, and pretty soon you have... Uh, War. The old saying goes, uh, "When men run out, when men run out of words, they reach for their swords." Um, yeah, and you know I've seen that over the years. You used to be that I would get into conversations with people uh, of different belief systems, and and you know you could corner them with the scriptures and show them that they're wrong, and they'd kind of get quiet and say, "Well, I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to think about that." But now it's like they've learned all the ways to answer, you know, and they, you try to argue with people and they just, they take their stands and you can even, even if you prove them wrong, they still, they take their stand and they're not going to budge one minute, one bit. And, um, I mean, science comes out and shows that a lot of the woke movement is wrong, that it's failing and a lot of the other modern movements that they're wrong and you can prove that they're wrong scientifically prove that they're wrong but the people don't care they don't care about the truth uh the just take the government here the federal reserve and they come out and they say um, we have inflation at three percent i don't know why anybody would believe that uh that's insanity inflation is not three percent uh you look back at the cost of groceries just even before the pandemic 2019 the cost of groceries has skyrocketed. The cost of insurance, the cost of, uh, you know, name it. 
everything's going way up. So, I mean, you'll get some little dips here and there with deflation and inflation and whatever will go up and down a little bit, but it's still, it's trending, you know, worse. Um, but uh, hatred is part of the thing that creates civil war. And there's a lot of hatred right now in America. And it's not just all the radical white Anglo-Saxon Protestants like me that we're the ones fomenting hatred and we're the racists and whatever. No, there's, there's a lot of racism on the other side as well, on the left. And a lot of people that are not content to let people like me practice my beliefs and, you know, just even the thing of eating meat. Uh, you shouldn't be allowed to eat a certain amount of meat anymore because it's bad for the environment or something like this. It's craziness. Absolutely crazy. They want to control how I live my life. Make me give up my ancestral ways and my culture and my beliefs and everything else. It's not happening. So what's what are the options? Well, war. That's the only option. But uh, I'll show you the next point here. The second concept that I want to talk about is the concept of a righteous cause. Um, whenever you have warfare, the one of the best motivating factors is a righteous cause. Uh, down here in the town of Patton right now, the old garage here at our office that needs to be torn down. And I'll spin around here in a minute. You'll be able to see that the uh, down here where the backhoe used to be, right in this area right here, it's not there anymore. Gave it to a neighbor. A farmer in the area wanted it. Asked if uh, I wanted to sell it and I said, I'll give it to you. I don't know if it runs or not. Could be completely ruined or whatever else, so you can have it. So I let a farmer have it in the area. And they had quite an ordeal getting it out of here because it didn't run. So they had to drag it up through and get it up through the yard here, up through the hill and everything. But anyhow, getting back to what I was saying, the idea of a righteous cause. If you're going to have war, if you are going to have some kind of a fight of some kind of civil war, um, the side that will win will be that one that has a righteous cause. And you'd be surprised how many people, men become, uh, they go from being atheists to uh, praying in God, or praying to God uh, very quickly uh, when it comes to war, because you realize that all the different training and all the different stuff that you have that you thought that you could rely on, um, it all goes away when the bullets are flying and when people are dying. And you start to think about uh, where am I going to go when I die? And, uh, Things get very real very quickly. And so, um, a righteous cause. If you have a military that has a that believes that they have a righteous cause in what they're doing, then you will have it uh, a good morale and you will have courage built. Uh, they think that we're doing what God wants us to do. We're doing the right thing. Um, that righteous cause will lead to good morale and uh, building of courage in battle. God is on my side. God is my protector. Uh, that's an important thing. You cannot have a good, strong, atheistic military. Uh, that just leads to problems. Uh, secondly, it points towards a good future after the war is over. A righteous military says we're going to bring in a good system. We're going to bring things, you know, once we win, once we defeat this, the bad guys, well then we're going to have a good future for you out there. A good thing for your family, your wife and your children back home will make things good for them. Um, an unrighteous army isn't going to do that. It's just a matter if we need to kill and we need to do this genocide or whatever else. Uh, that's not a righteous cause. Um, and thirdly, it inspires discipline and cohesion. Uh, a righteous cause is needed to have discipline in the military. Um, if you just have uh, everybody does what they want and whatever else, and you can just whatever you feel, if it feels good, do it kind of a thing. It doesn't inspire discipline. Discipline is inspired by men believing in, a, in what they're doing and also believing that their leaders have a closer connection to God than they do. Or at least have a, you know, there's a, I'm supposed to submit to this man because he really understands what he's doing. He's caring for my soul. He wants us to win. Okay. Um, again, that will lead to a uh, victorious army. So here in America, you have the conservative right 
wing people and they're saying we want our country back the godly nation that we once had a nation that respected the bible a nation that uh was built on christian uh values and ethics um not saying everybody was saved certainly not not saying every founding father was saved of course not but the whole thing is um it is impossible to rightly govern without god and the bible that was a concept uh, that was here in america and so a righteous army in this coming civil war is going to want that and say, you know, we want a good system in the future for our children and our children's children. We want our children to be taught the Ten Commandments, that they're not to steal or lie or things like that. Honor their parents. That's a good thing. But an unrighteous army, the liberal left says, uh, we want to just continue to push the envelope of what has been acceptable. We show through our actions that we actually hate God. We hate the way that God made us. God made you to be a woman. No, he didn't. I'm non-binary. God made you to be a man. No, no, he didn't. He made me to be a, a feminine fruitcake. Uh, no. See, a good, righteous cause is necessary in a civil war. And uh, the left right now, the city people, a lot of the people in the cities, they don't have that righteous cause. They have a very unrighteous cause, which I'll talk about next. All right, now we're in the town of Holton. And uh, behind me here is an old abandoned Burger King. Went out of business in uh, 2020 when the pandemic thing started. You can see some of the prices. I have no idea how much they've changed over the years. I don't eat Burger King. But I uh, just got out of Martin's over here. I'll show you. The Martin's store, of many people know it here in the state of Maine. If you know the jingle, the Martin's jingle, put it in the comments section below. I should have what? Uh, put it in the comments below if you know what I'm talking about. But the third concept for the coming civil war is uh, an unrighteous cause. I talked about righteous cause back in Patton. But what about an unrighteous cause for a civil war? The people that say well, they want to destroy what this nation once stood for. What America used to be kind of ironic this used to be America here behind me but uh, it's not anymore but um, <clears throat> people come along and they say we're not happy with uh, the way America is there's too much white privilege there's too much uh, you know Christian concept type of stuff around and we want to tear that down we want to destroy that um, well uh, you're not going to do very good because a unrighteous cause is self-destructive first point there against it it's very self-destructive people come out with all this stuff of uh we have to overthrow this and we hate this and we hate that and it's very self-destructive is what it is um basically it comes with a philosophy that the strongest survive you have people that um uh they're filled with hatred and they basically come out and they destroy other groups and things and and uh, we don't agree with this group, we don't agree with that group, and then they just destroy things. It's uh, very self-destructive. A good example of this, what I'm talking about, would be Communist Russia. Communist Russia was very self-destructive. And Stalin got to the point where he was turning so many people against other people and other groups, you know, destroy this group, when that one's gone, we'll destroy another one, that uh, the guy was living in a house in the middle of nowhere, um, having all of his food tested and everything for poison and uh i mean what a terrible life what an absolutely terrible life and of course because there's no righteous cause it leads to more future wars that's what it does more fighting more division um if you have a righteous cause for a nation you say we need to get rid of the evil and the violent people that hate america well what's the end of that go back to the old America back to the way things used to be before people started messing the country up if on the other hand you have an unrighteous cause in a, in a civil war what are you going back to what are you going to I should say you don't go back to anything you want to change the country so what do you go to you go to a nation uh, that is just filled with violence and one regime takes over another regime and another regime takes over that regime and they just fight all the time you see that in the Old Testament, in the Bible. A lot of times the wars that were fought in the Old Testament, they weren't righteous. 
and one family takes over another family and they kill all the other members and then they you know live for a little while and they're worshiping idols and graven images and everything else and then they take over and then another nation or another family comes to power and then they take over and they kill all the other people it's unrighteous it's a terrible thing so that's another reason why um, I think that this coming civil war the what the left want the uh, communists and socialists and everything else with their universal basic income and all their other satanic agenda they're going to fail they're not going to make it uh, because they don't have a righteous cause which brings me to my fourth point civil war is a lot like a loose tooth uh, it's a bit of a pain you can put up with it for a while but uh, you eventually have to pull it out and it's painful and uh, that's just the way that it is Behind me here's the Hannaford store we just came out of. I don't go to Walmart, but uh, Walmart's a big problem for this nation. Helped to destroy this country with all of the made in China garbage, putting so many different American companies out of business. Um, very anti-American company. Uh, very wicked people that own it, the Walton family. Very evil people. But, uh, you know, coming in with the guise of, oh, we care about America while destroying America. Yeah, nice. But uh, the fact of the matter is that a nation that goes the way America is going, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering in this country. And if people think that we're going to somehow come out of it without pain, without any removal of the tooth, so to speak, uh, that's not going to happen. It just simply isn't. America is going to have to have the tooth removed. I dealt with that many years ago. I had a loose tooth and uh, right down in here, right there, and um, it was just loose and it just would move around a little bit and it just, you know, I'll deal with it and dealt with the pain for a long time. Finally, I just had enough and I ripped it out myself. No pain medication or anything else. So that was very painful, extremely painful. I uh, didn't want to do that again after I did it. Um, not much fun, but you know what? It felt really good when it was done. Which brings me to my fifth point. All right, well, we made it back to the office here in Patton, and I want to talk about the fifth concept for the coming Civil War. Um, <clears throat> this one is the science of guns and ammunition. What do I mean by that? Well, if you've been around firearms for any length of time, you understand that there's a lot of debate within the firearms community. Uh, what is the best uh, handgun uh, self-protection type of thing to caliber to carry? Nine millimeter, 45, 40, caliber you know 357 magnum should you have a revolver should you have a automatic type of pistol semi-auto um 1911 versus glock you know the, the whole thing um and then of course in the rifle world you have the 556 versus 762 by 39 the ak round and or 762 by 51 the 308 and there's a lot of debate back and forth and um quite frankly most of the people that debate it never end up using it anything or if they do it's just an isolated incident some kind of a bad guy comes along and you have to deal with them and deal with the threat and it's over um so you know but uh the other thing is um when it comes to calibers and things like that the military uh, the standard round for the military is 556 which is 223 uh, you might not understand any of this if you're not into firearms, but, um, you know, the whole pro point of that round, that caliber, you know, most World War I, World War II, they were using 30 caliber. In the beginning part of Vietnam, they were also using 30 caliber, um, be it 30 odd six or 308. And then they switched over to the small 22 caliber 556 five, round. And the idea was there to injure the enemy and not necessarily kill because it's harder to take care of an injured enemy than it is to take care of a dead one. And, um, but in a civil war situation, you're not dealing with that. You're not dealing with two different armies of men that have been trained professionally and whatever else. In a civil war, you are dealing with the coming civil war. I'm talking first civil war. They did have some, you know, the calibers were very similar, but um, in the coming civil war, uh, with what's going to happen, I believe, here in America, that uh, a lot of the talk is going on, um, it's going to be a situation where one side's going to wipe out the other side. They want to wipe them out, not injure them. 
And so again, that's going to lead to some really weird um, situations, we'll say. And, uh, you know, depending on where you're at, depending on how things go, the other thing is going to be what the Bible calls going to warfare at your own charges. In other words, you have to pay for it. Um, if uh, civil law and order breaks down and whatever else, um, people are going to have to pay for their own weapons, for their own warfare. So that's going to be a whole other issue. Um, the point of this whole video, in other words, is there's a lot that's coming that's facing America, especially as we see this country breaking down, as we see things really starting to fall apart. And it's going to be a time where we're going to, going to really have to rely on the Lord for what's about to happen to this nation. And unfortunately, like I said, there is no way around it that I can see. I mean, the catching up of the body of Christ could happen, you know, or something before it really goes under, gets underway, or it could happen during it, you know, and that'd be kind of the way they would cover it up, you know, what happened to the people that certain people disappeared or whatever. No idea. You can come up with those theories, but uh, I believe that it's wanted now. They're, they're trying all this propaganda through Hollywood, you know, try to get people thinking in the direction of civil war. Uh, because, you know, there's no foreign country that's going to take over America. It's not about to happen. Um, so the only way to take down America is from within. Anybody can figure that out. So, uh, I would say the best thing to do is to get yourself in really good shape. If you have no um, garment, I think that, or excuse me, if you have no sword, then sell your garment and buy a sword, if you know what I mean. Um, you say, well, I can't, where I'm at, we can't have uh, firearms, brother. Okay, well then, uh, you might want to consider getting a real sword or some other type of defense. I want you to think about it. Um, right now, if I'm standing here in my driveway like this and some bad guy starts to come up here, pulls up, gets out, starts to run at me, um, what would I want? Well, I'm going to want something to stop that threat. I'm not going to just want to say, okay, well, you know, I'll try to take him on with my hands or something hand-to-hand -hand combat. No thank you, especially if the guy's on drugs or if he's got a weapon himself. You want to have uh, things that you can do. Um, and, you know, I'm just talking plainly because the, the time will come when it's going to be too late to prepare for this. And uh, I really, honestly, I do not think that Christians should be praying against it. I don't think that Christians should be saying, you know, Lord, please help it never to go to war or something. Um, if if w there's no war, and this country is not restarted, the evil and the perversion is going to get worse and worse. Um, up there in Holton just not long ago, and I showed you in the uh, Hannaford parking lot, uh, there's a freak that works there at the cash registers now, and um, just absolutely disgusting. Uh, some kind of transgendered thing or whatever else, and it's only going to get worse. So that whole thing has to stop. It really does. And um, the only way around it is what this country has coming, and that is war. So um, if you're younger, uh, make sure that you have some way to protect yourself, defend yourself, and um, get yourself in good shape. That's going to be very important. And uh, spiritually as well. You have something on my hat there. Oh, no, it's just a symbol. Uh, vehicles right now are so dirty from all the roads and the junk on the roads, so... You get it on your pant leg, and then you get it on your fingers, and you get it on your hat. <laughs> but uh, Christians have had to fight down through the centuries, brethren. It's not anything new. There isn't any kind of a shocking thing that, oh, no, we have to fight now or whatever else. We've had to do it before, and we'll have to do it again. And um, you can take a pacifist type of approach and say, you know, well, I'll just... Uh, let the Lord protect me or I'll die for the Lord or whatever else. You can do that. Or you can say, you know what? Um, I'm going to fight against this evil. And uh, I'm not going to be okay with it. I'm done. Um, if you're in a bad situation, a bad city area or whatever else, do what you can to get away from there. Again, read the book of Acts. Christians were moving. Christians were not just a uh, stationary. They had the holy... First Baptist Church in Antioch or First Baptist Church in Jerusalem and they never left. No, they left. They got out of there. 
uh, the whole church was scattered abroad many times. And if you're in a bad situ situation, a bad area, you might have to leave. You might have to move from there. So, some very serious things to think about, brethren. Um, but I just, I feel compelled to, to say some things about some of these type of subjects. So, hopefully I've made some good points, give you some things to think about. Um, rough times ahead, brethren, but yet uh, in rough times there are good times. Remember that, because uh, when things get bad, you can show that the Lord is protecting you. And um, so, I forget how the saying goes, something about um, bad times create good men, uh, good times create bad men, or something like that. Or, you know, there's, it's more to it than that, but there's a lot of truth to that whole thing. So, um, bad times can create very good people. People that all of a sudden understand their need for the Lord. So, I guess that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the upcoming videos.